So, uh, as you see, the title of my talk is A Local Realistic Reconciliation of the EPR Paradox. And most people in chemistry, when you're brought up going through chemistry, you don't know what the EPR Paradox is. So I'm going to have to spend some time explaining what the EPR Paradox is and other stuff which is related to it. But really, this title is heresy. It's heresy to physicists. Every physicist is brought up with the EPR Paradox and knows all about it. But... The words local realistic are heretical. And the reason is most people do not believe that nature is fundamentally local and real. They think it is non-local, indeterministic, and statistical. Now, uh, Einstein didn't like that. And he famously said, God does not play dice. But today, the vast majority of physicists believe, indeed, that God does play dice. So this talk is about the foundations of quantum mechanics. And I want to state from the beginning that I am not in any way trying to change quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics serves us very well. Quantum mechanics is a fantastic theory of the microscopic, and I am not going to in any way change it. In fact, quite the contrast, I'm going to be using the concepts of quantum mechanics to extend it down from the indeterministic and statistical nature that we have from quantum mechanics down to a local realistic point of view. The first half of my talk, I'm going to just rush through this uh, just so you can see that. Interpretation of quantum mechanics, talk about the EPR paradox, some problems with quantum mechanics, consequences of measurement, coincidence photon experiments which are fundamental in this particular field, entanglement, non-locality, Bell's inequalities, and that's background information before I can get actually into my model. And my model basically says that this is our usual idea of a spin, a single point particle description of a spin one-half, which has a single axis of quantization when you have a probe present, a magnetic field. But in the absence of a probe, I'm going to suggest in my model that spin has two orthogonal axes of quantization. There's a misconception in the community, and that misconception is local reality means classical. Well, it doesn't. Locality means that when you take two particles which are close together and you separate them, their forces between them, the intermolecular forces, get weaker and weaker and weaker until finally they're independent particles without any connectivity between them. That's what locality means. Reality means that every attribute of my system is given by pure dispersion-free states. That's what local reality means. The misconception that people want local reality is classical is not what I'm doing at all. What I'm doing is I'm using quantum mechanics. And what is fundamental to what happens in my model is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which I think you've all heard of. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle says that when you have two observables or two canonically conjugate variables, position momentum, two components of the Pauli spin vector operator which don't commute, you introduce the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that says if you try to measure these components simultaneously, you will introduce some fundamental dispersion, delta P, delta Z, or delta sigma X, which means, and it has a consequence, that if you had an observable A that depends upon two observables that don't commute, you cannot get all the information out of that observable in one experiment. You've got to do two experiments. One experiment, if I look at the expectation value of A, has to be an experiment that can measure X, the X component, and then you need another which will measure the Z component. You cannot get all the information out. That's what the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is basically saying. So, why am I a little bit excited about this model? The reason is, is because of this graph, and I'll explain it in more detail as we go through. But it's just a minus cosine theta. I won't tell you what theta is right now. I'll tell you what theta is later. But this minus cosine theta is the, is the quantum mechanical result. And the little blue dots there is a simulation that I've done with my two-dimensional model. It's a simulation that exactly agrees with a quantum result. And that agreement was thought never to be possible with a local realistic model. The best anybody had hoped to do with a local realistic model is this. And that difference between this curve and the actual quantum curve 
is a measure of quantum correlation. It's actually thought to be due to entanglement that persists between particles that have separated and remain entangled. And I'll have to talk about what entanglement means. So the reason I'm excited about this is the simulation that I did click by click, 10 million clicks, reproduces in a local realistic way the quantum result, the quantum correlation of minus cosine theta. So let's talk about the interpretations of quantum mechanics. Well, you know, there's a lot of confusion down at the bottom of quantum mechanics and the foundations of quantum mechanics. Let's look at them. The Copenhagen interpretation is the most common interpretation today. Then we have many worlds, consistent history, statistical ensembles, De Broglie, Ohm theory, rational quantum mechanics, elementary cycles, transactional, stochastic, objective, collapse theory, conscious causes, collapse, many minds, quantum logic, quantum information, modal interpretation, branching space, and many, many more. Okay? Only two of these interpretations allow for a deeper theory than quantum mechanics. All those other theories believe quantum mechanics is a complete description of nature. And if it's a complete description of nature, and as you know, all we get out of quantum mechanics is probabilities, then quantum mechanics is a statistical theory. I'm going to be using the statistical interpretation, the statistical ensemble interpretation of quantum mechanics, and I'm talking about the single particles that make up the quantum ensemble. Let me, for example, give you an indication. Here is the stern gorlach simulation. This FET Colorado physics site has many, many, many good simulations, and I encourage you to go and look at these. And this is the one for the stern gorlach experiment. Here we have a source of spins. I'm going to take a random source. We'll take silver atoms. That's what Stern and Gerlach first used in 1922 when they discovered the spin one-half. And you, in the simulation, you can use three magnetic fields, up to three magnetic fields at different orientations. I'm only going to use one in the laboratory Z direction. And what happens is when a particle moves through here, it will be deflected up or down in that magnetic field. And I have a little paddle here. And that little paddle can be up and down, so it'll block off one of the exits and so either the particle is transmitted or it is absorbed. So this is a filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire an atom. Is it going to be deflected up or down? How many people say up? It went up. It went up. It went down. It went up. Quantum mechanics fails to predict, this is the indeterministic nature of quantum mechanics, whether that spin will be deflected up or down. Only, only after I fire a statistically large number of particles through this, through this filter, do we get Malice's law emerging. And it's after the filter that quantum mechanics works. And you see, in order to get Malice's law, in order to get the quantum mechanical result, you have to have a statistically large number of particles pass through. So quantum mechanics works out here, but it doesn't work down there. You cannot predict before the particle enters the filter whether it will be deflected up or will be deflected down. So in the statistical ensemble interpretation of quantum mechanics, and this was developed mainly by the Russians in the 50s and 60s, and a beautiful paper in 1970 by Leslie Ballantyne at Simon Fraser University talks about the fact that the quantum state is an ensemble and composed of particles. And what I'm doing is I'm working at this level, at the level of a single particle that makes up the quantum ensemble. And by averaging over the properties, the variables, they're called local hidden variables, of this spin, you will recover the quantum mechanical result. So what is the EPR paradox? 